Oh, I love my new music. What do you guys think? Hey, it's Will. I am the Bowtie Sober Guy. Oh man, that was kind of fun. That's uh, some new music that I, I found and downloaded. Um, it was uh, so I thought I'd try something new tonight and uh, see what everybody thinks. If you'd love to tell me what you think about the new music, um, let me know. I oh, always open to feedback. So excited to be with you guys on this Sunday night. Um, quite a Sunday night, isn't it? Things are uh, certainly changing in our world today, but uh, changing, you know, is always good. It could be bad. It just depends on how we look at it. And I just wanted to talk a little bit tonight about community. Um, you know, our communities are changing dramatically and very, very rapidly. Um, we just got an email earlier today about um, a group that Paul and I go to through our church um, that... Uh, we have been attending for a number of months, and um, they just sent out another email tonight saying, you know what, in the interest of everyone's health and everything else that's going on, we are canceling. Um, and that is just one of very many, and I'm sure you um, are experiencing that as well. And so um, the way we look at community is changing. It's a very interesting time. Um, I alluded to that a little bit the other night um, when I was talking about awareness and that kind of thing. But um, when you look at what's going on in our world today and um, community and, and how we think about community, how we connect with other people, um, all of those things is is, uh, is changing. And I know that we're just in a blip, right? There's just this little bubble that we're in right now. It's a blip when we look at the, when we look at all time. But um, I think there will be changes. I think that um, our country and our world will find out things and determine things based on this little um, forced experiment. Uh, for lack of a better way to put it. But, um, you know, again, it's, it's something that uh, we're going through today um, to really make sure that um, as, a, as a country and as a world that we keep as many people safe um, and with us as we possibly can. Um, but with that, there's new challenges. There's new opportunities, but there's also new challenges. And one of those new challenges is how do we do community? How do we, we do community in a world now where schools are canceled? Um, school sports are canceled. Um, third party sports teams and all that are canceled. I mean, you look at the professional sports leagues, they've all canceled. So if you were planning on going to spring training of the baseball team or any of the basketball games or hockey games or anything like that, you know, they put those seasons on, uh, on hold. And so, um, and those are all different places that we have community, right? We, we all get together, whether it's with, you know, just um, one or two friends, or maybe it's a group of people that we go to these things. Um, same thing with school. Uh, you know, that that actually has a pretty significant impact. Um, of course, our kids are older, so they're not um, in school. We don't have to deal with that today. Um, but I know we know a lot of people that are dealing with that. And now all of a sudden, um, you know, schools. Now that community for your kids is, is being taken away. Um, not only does it affect you and how you work and your daily grind and all of those things, but, you know, it, it's going to affect our kids and, and we're taking away that one community that we have. Um, <laughs> hey, Scott, 78 degrees, plenty of toilet paper. Awesome. All right. He's got toilet paper in Phoenix. Um, yeah, I love Phoenix. This is a great time of year to go to Phoenix, isn't it? Probably get a cheap flight. Um, but anyways, thanks for the invite, Scott. I appreciate that. Um, uh, but back to community. So all of a sudden our kids in school, uh, you know, are not in school is affecting us in a lot of different ways as well. Um, plus, so think about work. Um, I don't know how many of you, um, are, uh, being, you know, impacted by this. I know Paula was home at work on Friday and now she's home. Um, they're not, they shut down their office and, um, you know, her job is, is going to be more difficult. Um, because of that, and um, but that's okay. It's just it's a different way of doing business, right? We all have to we all have to go through that, and um, it's not like I'm experiencing any different than anyone else is. I mean, we all are experiencing the same things. We're all experiencing the same um, impacts when it comes to our communities, when it comes to our jobs, when it comes to our schools, when it comes to our families. We are all experiencing the same things, and I think that's important for us all to keep in context too. It's not like um, mine is any different than anyone else's. Now, there are some people that probably aren't as affected. I get that, you know, because of their lives and that kind of thing. But even with that, um, all of this is having an impact, I think, on everyone. Even, you know, you, you hear all the stuff about the grocery stores, right? And Scott made that funny joke about toilet paper. I mean, it's, it's, 
it's very true. We wanted, we, we've been looking for paper towels. Can't find any paper towels. Um, green beans. Funny story about that. And it's just, it's about Paula's mom um, as a snack for, or as a treat for her dog gives um, her green beans. So we've been looking for that. Um, paper towels and eggs. Eggs is the one thing that um, we have been having a hard time finding. But um, I am so digressing on all of that. So I apologize. So, um, but we, we just have a new way to live and we have a new way to look at, at community. Um, you know, I don't know how many of you, um, had church that was online today, um, or yesterday. I know a lot of churches did their services online and offer them online yesterday as well. Um, is the one that we go to. So, um, but there's all kinds of things that, um, all these things are, are, are changing in the way that we have to go around our daily lives. Um, I know for me personally, um, I am really trying not to um, let this impact me too much um, in a real negative way. Um, you know, it, it's interesting in the fact that uh, just a couple of weeks ago, when you're talking about the flu, I, I, I knock on wood, right? I hate saying this and I'm putting it on Facebook, uh, but I've never had the flu. Uh, I've had plenty of other illnesses and plenty of other things happen to me, but I've never had the flu. So I've never, ever gotten the flu shot. I actually was in for my physical a couple of weeks ago and told the nurse, take it off my chart because I just don't get it. Um, and, and so, you know, I, I hope I'm not being too, I, I'm not trying to be flipping about this at all because it is dangerous and it is affecting a lot of people and it, and it can be very, very serious. Um, I personally just feel like we are taking um, our precautions to the extreme, but that's just my opinion and nobody has to agree with that or not. It's just my opinion. Um, but so I'm, I'm trying to kind of live just how I normally would live, um, you know, with the exception of I don't have opportunity to go to community. So church groups um, that I'm a part of or Paula and I are part of, we can't go to that or we're doing them virtually. Some other things that I that I do as well, um, I have to do virtually. Um, you know, the good news is my coaching, a lot of my coaching is actually done um, virtually or it's one on one um, and it's not in big crowded areas or anything like that. So I don't have to typically worry about that. But even today, Paul and I went to down to Castle Rock and we went to the outlet malls uh, because, you know, well, and it was dead. There was no way there. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't use that word. It wasn't very busy. Uh, that's a really poor choice of words there. Um, so I apologize. But, um, you know, so I'm really trying hard not to let this impact me. It's still going to because, of course, we can't find eggs anywhere. So, OK, I can't have eggs. Um and, and, but the, but I also know the impact is, is severe on, uh, more severe on a lot of other people. So how does this impact your community? How does this impact what is going on in your world? Are you able to, um, get to the groups that are important to you? Are you able to really still socialize with those people that are important to you? Do you, um, how are you doing it now? A lot of things we have to do like this where we're at, you know, Zoom, um, the, the company Zoom, uh, I guess last week their stock in, increased like 300% or something because of all the demand there was for their product now, um, because this is how we're, we're actually doing community a lot more like this um, now. And some of it's even over the phone, some of it's over zoom, some of it's over, um, you know, go to meeting or whatever um, other platforms are out there. Uh, but we, uh, we all have to find different ways to communicate. We all have to find different ways to connect. Um, and my, uh, my encouragement to everyone is to find those ways. Find, don't, don't let this become a way um, to isolate. Um, there are a lot of people that might be hurting. They might be suffering. Um, they could be close friends, family members, um, that we can't allow them um, to use this as a time to isolate, to hide, and, and to um, kind of get away from, from it all. Uh, because that's the most unhealthy thing in especially the time we're going on now where there's an increased level of fear, there's an increased level of um, anxiety because of what's going on and how this is going to maybe in, impact us. Um, but, but really making sure that we're there for those people as well. Um, we're taking care of ourselves first and foremost, but we're also making sure that we're taking care and communicating um, with those other people. You know, you hear the term about making sure that you have um, – a posse and a tribe and your posse is your close knit group of people. And what does that community look like? And how are you staying connected to that posse? Are you um, still making the phone calls? Are you still making the text messages? Are you still sending encouraging emails? 
whatever it might be, are you still staying connected? Are you doing things like FaceTime on, you know, on the iPhone? You could actually do FaceTime if the other person has that so that you have a little bit of face-to-face -face interaction. And that's one thing that's, you know, for me, and, and I'm a little bit older, but um, that is really important to me when it comes to community is, is I, I do like the face-to-face, the, -face, the let's, let's get in front of each other and, and uh, shake hands or give each other a hug or whatever it might be. But, um, you know, we lose some of that in the world we're living in today. And now we have to really figure out how are we going to fulfill that need, that internal need for community in a different way without necessarily being um, right there, uh, you know, next to them side by side where we actually have to do it virtual. Um, thanks, Scott. Enjoy your dinner. Um, thanks for jumping on. Talk to you soon. Um, and thanks for the invite. And uh, so we have to be very aware of that because we don't know how long this is going to go on. We don't know how severe the impact is going to be. We don't know exactly what's going on, going to happen. It's not like the apocalypse, though, right? I mean, it's just that um, we are being asked not to go into big crowded areas for the most part. Um, and just be careful and, and aware of that and wash our hands a whole lot, not touch our face, right? We have to do all those things, um, which is just really good hygiene anyways. Um but now maybe it's becoming more um, in the forefront, which is always good. Um, so community is an interesting thing. I think that we have the ability to um, find new ways to do it. We have, find, we have the ability to find um, new avenues to go about community. And, you know, that's one of the things that is kind of, again, I look at kind of what we're going through today a little differently in the fact that I see where is their opportunity? Where is their opportunity to... Um, make changes? Where is there opportunity to incorporate technology like I'm doing here um, into our daily lives that maybe we didn't before? Um, without it taking over, how do we use it better? Um, I think that there's going to be great opportunity for our uh, the community of our secondary education. When you think about secondary education, they're being forced now to do a lot more online learning. And I know a lot, I mean, most colleges and campuses offer online learning and they offer um, that type of environment and that type of community. But I think that this is going to push them in a, in a very different way. And that community will probably change fairly dramatically, I would bet, in the, in the coming years because of this, this test. Um, and, and, and that's all it is. It's just a new way of thinking, a new way of doing business. And the reason I think that we're all fearful and, is that it is impacting our communities. It's impacting our daily lives, but it was, it happened so fast and nobody saw it coming. And so now all of a sudden fear takes over and, and, and unknown and uncertainty and, and that, you know, creates anxiety in people. Um, and that's why I go back to community and that's why I wanted to have you guys really start thinking about what does community look like for you going forward? What does it look like today? First of all, you know, I'd be taking an inventory and a stock of really what does your community look like today? Again, you probably have a small posse and then you've got a bigger tribe. Um, but what does that look like? How do you interact with them? How do you, um, how do you grow with them? How do you, um, help one another? in those environments? How are you there for them? And now that you kind of looked at that and you know how it was, how are you going to do it going forward? And again, I know that what we're going through right now is a short-term deal. It's not going to last forever. And um, But when things like this happen, what's interesting is how we respond after the fact and what we see is going to happen. And I think we're going to see changes. I think, and, and I don't know that any of our are good or bad. I think they're just going to be changes. And, you know, again, that's one of those things that, that is um, hard for some people and easy for others. I, I'm i kind of a freak. I, I actually like change um, and uh, not, not a ton, but I do like to change. I like change in my life. I like to move things around. And speaking of, I've got an announcement on that, too, as far as my studio here um, that I do my Facebook Lives. I'm going to be moving it. Um, not a huge thing, but I'll share here in a few minutes um, what that means. So, um but I think that we have an opportunity to really look at community. And we, we have an opportunity to look at our current community. We have an opportunity to look at um, our future communities and really determine what's important. How are we going to stay connected in that community and still maintain that level of personalness that we need in community? 
Uh, you know, I know for me, I get a lot more out of going to church than I do watching it online. And part of that is just the environment I'm in, the community that I'm in, that there's other people there. And, it, and it's the energy, it's the experience itself that I get. And that's one of the things that we miss and we're missing today because we're being asked to change. We're being asked to change the way that we go about our daily lives. Um, and, and again, it's not a bad thing. It's just different. And so I encourage you to figure out, you know, what does that look like for you? How do you maintain that level of connectedness? Because I think that's important. And, um, you know, I think as human beings, we need that. We need to be connected to each other. We need that community. And, um, you know, technology is great on being able to get us in front of each other when it comes to something like this. Um, but there also needs to be that human interaction and that um, personal touch and, and all of that, I believe. And, um, and so, you know, that's like I had said before, I went to uh, last weekend, um, I went to a week ago, I got back, but I went to a, a men's retreat up in the mountains. And it was pretty amazing um, in the experience that I had. And there was, I don't know, 30, 35 of us there total. And, um, you know, the fact that that community for me in that weekend was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. Pretty. It was supportive. It was nurturing. It was also something that pushed me outside of a comfort zone on a couple of different things. Um, but I also knew that um, there was no judgment. There was nothing like that going on and that I could be me. And I could experience me and and be there and get the things out of it that I needed to without anyone judging me or criticizing me or anything like that. And that's that's that community is is, is important. And I th- we're going to get back to that again. Um, this is not a long term problem. It's just a short term situation that we all have to deal with. Um, but I think it gives us that opportunity, right? So instead of um, us looking at this as oh my gosh. I am being, you know, asked to do this, 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 and this. First of all, remember, so is everyone else, right? Everyone is. You're not in this rowboat by yourself. Everyone is in the exact same rowboat. We have different circumstances. We're on different rivers. I get all that. But we have the same things to deal with. We're being, um, things are being changed and taken away. and, And those are the same things that are being changed and taken away for everybody else. So I think that's the first thing when it comes to community is re- recognize that you're not alone. You're not alone in this. This is, this is happening everywhere. Um, where, where you might be alone is how you choose to respond to it and react to it. Um, and I think that's important. And that's where your community is going to come into play because that's the third thing is really understanding how important your community is, who it is, how important it is, and how you can still stay connected to those individual posses and tribes that you are connected to currently. Um, and again, there's all kinds of different ways to do it. And, um, you know, Paul and I almost went for a hike today because, you know, that's not a place typically where you're going to find here in Colorado more than two or in Denver, more than 250 people on the trail. And it was a beautiful day. Um, it was a little cool. It wasn't horrible. It was actually a beautiful day for a hike. Uh, but that was one of the things that we thought of because we knew we could do that. So we're still outside. Her and I are in community together. Um, and instead we went to the other falls. <laughs> so, uh, but we were outside except for when we stepped in the store, but we were outside and, and we were in community with each other. Um, and it was a lot of fun and, and, you know, we got to enjoy, um, a place where there were really no crowds. And the last time we were there was around the holiday season and it was nuts. So it was nice to be there on that today. So, um, so again, community, it's just one of those things that is changing And again, there are things that may stay long term through the things that we're going through now with the coronavirus. There may be things that are short term and it's just something that we have to deal with now. So a lot of the groups um, that maybe you belong to, that you go to, the churches, the school things, the sports, all those things, that's all a short term thing. Um, We don't know what's going to happen in some of the long term things when it comes to education. And, you know, there's all kinds of things that we'll look at. I had an interesting question the other day of someone I I said this is an interesting experience experiment to see what's going to happen with the commercial real estate world so office space commercial office space I don't think it's going to have a major impact on retail space Um, it may in the short term but um, you know this is a great experiment for companies who maybe they have 10,000 square feet that they rent and all of a sudden through this series of events that their community that they actually have to have in a physical office space, they realize they only need 2,000 square feet. I don't know. Just a thought that I had. Um, again, I think that we will see um, 
we will see impacts of what we're going through um, going to the, the future. And, and I think that um, communities is one of the areas that will be affected by it. But I think that's up to us individually to make sure that we are still connected to our right communities and our right people and our right posses and um, our right tribes as well. So um, that was really it. I didn't have any big um, ideas on that, except that I think it's important for us to look at how we respond in this time um, to our need for community, because I think it's extremely important. Um, but I did um, reference that I had a couple things that I want to share with everyone. So um, the first is, is that I am going to be moving my fine um, room. You don't get to see a lot of it, but uh, where I've been doing my Facebook Lives, I think I'm going to move it. We have a room in our basement that is actually bigger um, than this room. And I think that I'm going to be moving my studio down into that room. Um, reason being is I have decided I want to see about bringing on, bringing in some guests. Um, I know a lot of podcasts do that and, um, you know, they'll bring on guests and that kind of thing. And um, I eventually will probably do a podcast, but for right now I'm going to stick to Facebook Live. And so I want to uh, start inviting uh, some people as guests. I don't know who yet. I don't have even have a, I don't even have a long list to create a short list from. Uh, but if you know of anyone and or if you yourself would love to uh, come on um, Bowtie Living and uh, talk a little bit about um, your experiences with life and um, what you uh, maybe have gone through, what you've overcome, uh, how you've done that, um, please, please let me know. Like I said, I, I'd love to start doing that and bringing other people um, into the, uh, the Bowtie Living uh, Facebook Lives. I think that would be a lot of fun. So that's one of the other reasons that I want to move it, move it down there. Um, is to be able to have guests and this room is just it's pretty small um, and so it's just a little bedroom and um, so uh, I think it would work better down there and, and I can set it up with some fun stuff and um, maybe actually be able to um, see more of the room and, and all that so uh, so that's one of the big things and then the big announcement um, that I wanted to share that I'm really really excited about is because I've shared a bunch of stuff about Bowtie Living and, and kind of what it is, but I, I really am I'm on a mission. Um, and that mission is that I want to help others transform life's knots into Bowtie Living. And, you know, life's, life's knots are everything from fear, stress, destructive habits, broken relationships, um, unhealthy emotions. Um, I know we all experience those at times. Unfulfilled careers um, and even addiction, which is, of course, my story. Um, and really um, transform, those are all really what I consider life's knots. And really the list could go on and on. There's all kinds of things. And, um, you know, as I've shared before, some are tight, some are loose, some are small, some are big. Um, but regardless, I, I believe we all have them. And, and sometimes we choose to bury them under a lot of things. And that thing that we bury it with may actually become one of our biggest knots. Um, for me, that was alcohol. And my biggest knot was um, alcohol because I was burying all the other stuff that I had thought and that I felt um, under alcohol. So that was my big knot that I first started to really transform into bow tie living. And I've transformed a lot of things since then. So, um, but so I wanna, I'm on this mission, right? I, and I'd love for you to join me on this mission um, of transforming these life's knots into bow tie living. And so bow tie living, what, really what I wanted to do is share kind of an explanation of what that looks like. And it's really a life recovery program um, and community and community. This is really where it gets exciting. Um, that really is designed to show us how to live with inspired purpose. And for me, inspired purpose is nothing more than overcoming obstacles, um, obstacles that we put in place by ourselves, that others put in, in front of us, um, but overcoming those, how to have open and honest and loving relationships with other people, um, and not just our family and our friends, but really with people, um, how to have loving relationships with everyone. Um, achieving inspired results. Um, you know, let's stop settling for the status quo. Let's go out there and find um, really what your purpose is, your inspired purpose, your God-given purpose, and let's go out there and, and do it together. Um, and doing all this stuff with happiness, joy, peace, and serenity, um, and literally moving from brokenness to wholeness. And a lot of you might be saying, well, I'm not really broken. Uh, well, maybe you're not broken. Maybe there's little pieces that are broken, that you would just love some healing. And that's really what Bowtie Living 
is. And when I mentioned community, um, that's, that's what I'm really excited about. I'm going to be launching an online community. Um, for right now, it'll just be online. Um, I have a, a future vision of all kinds of other things, but for right now, it's going to be an online community. And um, when I think about community, I think about the bow tie and transforming life's knots. And, and as we all know, there is a knot in a bow tie. But that knot in a bow tie actually is what keeps the bow tie together. And that's one of the things I think community does in our lives is it helps keep, that's, that's one of our knots. Ooh, that's backwards. See, I can't even do that. Um, but it, the community is like a knot in a bow tie. It's one of the knots that actually helps keep us together. And that's why I'm going to be launching bow tie living in this, this, um, community, um, for bow tie living. And, um, it's, as I mentioned, you probably already have a, a tribe and a posse and, and all of that. And I want Bowtie Living just to be um, one of those things that you add to it, that you increase the number of people that might be in your tribe, that you increase the number of people that might be in your posse um, and, and doing it through community. Um, and this, this community is going to be a membership only community. Um, and so I will be, again, I'll make sure to get all kinds of information out to you guys, but it is going to be membership based. Um, and it's not going to be crazy price or anything like that. It's going to be very, very affordable, but it is going to be a membership. Um, and it's going to be something that is created to where only members It's very private. And when I say private, it's only members. Um, there are not uh, going to be general public. Um, the only people that are going to be part of the community are people that are part, part of the, the membership and the private community. Um, and it's going to be um, built with love. It's going to be built to be able to support, give advice, encouragement um, to everyone. Everyone that's part of that community can come in and feel feel that way. Um, and everyone's going to be welcome, regardless of what's going on in their lives. It doesn't matter. You know, I thought I was the worst person in the world back three years ago, and no one would want me in. Those are the kind of people I would love to have as part of our community. Um, because I, I know what can happen in someone's life. Um, just like it did in mine, because I went through that. And because I did, you don't have to. And that's what exci- that's what's exciting and, and I'm trying to create with this community is a place where we can do that. And we can do it together. We can come together and create this new this new place that, that you know, my hope is that one day it explodes and it grows into something huge. And um, it's worldwide and it's got, you know, a lot of members. I, I don't even want to throw a number out there yet. But um but it's going to be welcoming. It's going to be authentic. It's going to be real, um, honest. Um, we're not, it's not going to be filled with a bunch of fluff. Um, there's not going to be judgment. We're not going to allow people to be judged or judge others or anything like that. Um, it's going to have, um, you know, my Facebook lives. It's going to have videos. It's going to have um, different posts um, throughout the week, um, little lessons here and there, webinars, Really going to have access to all kinds of things. And as some of you know, I launched my my program, Bowtie Living, uh, a couple weeks ago. And it went very, very well. It's a six-step program. That will be, you'll also have access to that, um, being able to get in and, and go through that process, whether it's alone or with the community. Um, and again, some of these things are just still in my head. And I don't even know exactly how they're going to look or how they're going to work out. Um, but I'd love for you to join me. Um, because you know, this is a mission that I'm on and I want to, I want to take this mission and I want to build it. I want to build it with like-minded people, people that want to transform life's knots into this way of living that I call bow tie living. Um, and you know, because this living that I talk about in bow tie living has given me a freedom that I never felt before. Um, and, and when I say ever, probably ever in my life, I didn't feel the amount of freedom that I had. Um, and I want this community to be that same thing and built around people that have that same dream and that same, um, aspiration to really go out and want to follow that path, um, and want to go down it before they get to a point where I was. Um, because, you know, I believe everyone can have this unbelievable, um, God filled great life of achieving, achieving things that make them happy. Um, and then being happy and finding joy, even, um, in the suffering. Um, because that's where I'm at. That doesn't mean that you don't feel fear. You don't, aren't sad. You don't have apprehension. It doesn't mean you don't have those feelings. It just means that through this process of becoming part of this community, now you have another, um, you have another, uh, group behind you that can walk through it with you, um, and can guide you through that and, and can be there because we're all going to experience that. We're going to have plenty of pain. We're going to have plenty of fear. We're going to have, 
um, sadness, apprehension, worry, maybe even some anxiety about things. But that doesn't mean that those will define us any longer. And that's the big difference. We may feel those things, and it's okay to feel those things. Those are God-given emotions. But what happened to me was I let those feelings define who I was as a person, and those should not define you. And that's what we learn in Bowtie Living. So if you'd like to join me on this this mission of um, transforming life's knots into Bowtie Living, please reach out. Let me know. You can PM me. You can write in the comments. Do whatever. Um, if, if you have my phone number, you can call me. Um, call or text me. Let me know. Um, like I said, I will be sending out um, more information um, as I get more of it rolled out. Um, I'm pretty close. I'm thinking this week. It'll be rolled out this week. So uh, I'm excited to be on the lookout for what that community looks like and, and how you can join it. And um, I will have some sort of special offer for those that want to jump on early as well. So um, be on the lookout for that. Um, and then I have one more favor. Uh, one more favor to ask of you guys is that, you know, if, if you guys see value um, in what I'm doing with, with Bowtie Living in my Facebook lives, I would love it if you wouldn't mind sharing it to your group or to your um, story or to your um what am I trying to say? Your feed um, and just share it, uh, you know, because like, like I said, one of the ways that, that I'm going to be able to grow this and help more and more people and to grow this community that I want to grow is through people like you helping me do that. Um, and that's just one of the ways that you can be involved outside of just um, wanting to join the community as well. So I would definitely appreciate if you share it to your wall and please stay tuned. Um, like I said, there is a ton more information that's going to be coming up. I am so excited. It is going to be so much fun. And just like I started, I'm going to end with the music. And I'm going to need, I'd love to get your guys' feedback on what you think of um, my music. Let's see if it's going to play. But until I talk to you guys again, Will I Am, the Bowtie Sober Guy. Peace out. <laughs>